In this tutorial, we'll discuss data type conversions in C-sharp. What does statically typed mean? What is implicit and explicit data type conversion? How do we define and implement user-defined implicit and explicit conversion operations? We'll discuss these data type conversion-related concepts, and as always, code examples will be provided. Welcome to Gavinlon Digital. Okay, before we dive into writing code, please subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. Please view the last tutorials, part two and part three of the C-Sharp for Beginners course, which contains content about C-Sharp data types and variables respectively, to give this tutorial on data type conversions a broader context. Please see the details of where you can download code and documentation relevant to this tutorial from GitHub below in the description. What is a statically typed programming language? c -sharp is statically typed at compile time. This means once you have defined a variable as a particular type, you can't define the variable again and you cannot assign a value of an incompatible data type to a variable. Here is an example of defining a variable twice. This would result in a compile time error stating, a local variable or function named A is already defined in the scope. This code would result in a compile time error stating, cannot implicitly convert type string to int. Variables defined as certain numeric data types can be implicitly converted to variables defined as other data types. This table can be downloaded from GitHub. Details of the repository can be found in the GitHub documents section below in the description. It contains details of predefined implicit numeric data type conversions in c -sharp. Let's look at an example of this. We defined a variable named A as the byte data type and initialized its value to 255. We then defined a variable named B as a short integer data type and assigned the value of variable A to variable B. The variable A, which is defined as the byte data type, is implicitly converted to the data type with which variable B is defined, the short integer data type. Now what happens if we turn the scenario on its head by assigning a short integer variable to a byte defined variable? As you can see, we get a compile time error which states, cannot implicitly convert type short to byte. An explicit conversion exists, are you missing a cast? So you have to explicitly convert the short integer data type to the byte data type for this to work. This table contains details regarding explicit numeric data type conversions in C-sharp. This table can be downloaded from GitHub. Details of the repository can be found in the GitHub documents section below in the description. We are going to use a conversion helper class to perform the explicit conversion of the short data type defined variable to the byte data type defined variable. This helper class is the convert static class and the method we are going to use for the conversion of a value defined as a short integer to the byte data type is the two byte method. Let's see what happens when we try this. Let's see if the code compiles. And it does. Great, so that works perfectly. What happens now if we change the value of variable b to 256 and then try to assign this value to the byte defined A variable. Ah, uh, we get an error stating the following. System.overflow exception has been thrown. Value was either too large or too small for an unsigned byte. Let's look at an allegorical example of why this explicit conversion failed. The byte data type supports a range of values between 0 and 255. It is unsigned, which means it only supports positive whole numbers. This data type constrains variables defined as this data type to 8 bits of data. So let's depict 8 slots. These 8 slots represent a memory portion on the stack set aside for a byte defined variable's data. Each slot can store 1 bit of data. 1 bit of data can either be a 1 or a 0. 255 is represented in binary as the following. As you can see, these 8 ones fit perfectly in the slots. 
Eight slots to contain this value is clearly enough space to contain the byte represented value of 255. Now, the value of 256 requires at least nine slots to store the data to represent this value. This is what the value of 256 looks like in memory in binary notation. One followed by eight zeros, i.e. nine bits of data. At least nine slots are clearly necessary to store this amount of bits. The next integer data type in terms of supported range up from the byte is the short integer data type, which allows for 16 slots of memory space. So the value of 256, which requires nine bits of data and thus nine memory slots, clearly fits into 16 slots. But the number of bits needed to represent 256 overflows when limited to eight slots of storage space, which essentially is what is happening when converting a 16-bit data type, short integer, to an eight-bit data type, byte data type. Thus you can see that the number of bits, nine bits to be precise, used to represent 256 in binary notation overflows when an attempt is made to insert this value that requires more than eight bits into eight slots of storage space. The console.readline method, which we have used throughout this course to return a user's input for our console projects, returns a value that is of the string data type. If, for example, the user is entering a numeric value that may be involved in a mathematical operation, let's use the annual salary variable defined in the employee application that we created in the data types tutorial as an example. The value returned by the console.readline method must first be explicitly converted into the decimal data type before it is assigned to the decimal defined variable annual salary. An implicit type conversion from string to decimal does not exist in c so we have employed the convert.toDecimal method to explicitly convert the string returned by the console.readline method to a decimal data type before assigning the value returned after the explicit conversion has been performed to the decimal defined variable annual salary. And you can see we have used appropriate explicit conversions for all the other data values entered by the user, except for the first name and the last name variables, which are defined as the string data type. So we need to explicitly convert the string returned by the console.readline method when assigning the return value to the employee ID variable defined as int, the annual salary variable defined as decimal, the gender variable defined as char, and the isManager variable defined as bool. These explicit conversions had to be performed because there is no implicit conversion in C-sharp from string to either of these data types. Let's look at the float data type, which is able to store values that are fractional. So what happens if we convert the following variable that is defined as a system.single data type to an integer data type? Note the keyword float can be used as an alias when defining a variable of the system.single type. A variable defined as a float data type can store whole number values and also values that represent a fractional part. So what happens if we declared a float data type variable and decided to assign this variable to a variable defined as an int? So we need to explicitly cast the float defined variable to an integer before it can be assigned to the integer defined variable. So let's do this and see what happens. Great, so this does not result in a compile time error. I'm going to use concatenation, which is the joining of more than one string from end to end to construct a narrative that will be outputted to the console screen for clarity. I'm using string interpolation for the narrative string so that we can include the variable values directly in the string literal. We can implement string interpolation by including a dollar symbol at the beginning of each string literal that we want to output to the console screen and by wrapping the relevant variable names in curly brackets. So it is important to note that a loss of data has occurred here. This explicit conversion operation from float to int has resulted in a loss of value of 0.26. It is important to understand that an explicit type conversion can result in a loss of data. I want to demonstrate how a developer can create custom data type conversions, both explicitly and implicitly. This topic is perhaps a bit advanced for a beginner's course, but the example we're about to create will at the very least serve to highlight that the developer is not limited to the built-in data type conversion operations provided by C-sharp. Although structs and classes have not yet been fully explored in this course, we'll use a struct to demonstrate user-defined type conversion implementation. Structs and classes will be appropriately explored in upcoming tutorials. Conversion operators have the following properties. Conversions declared as implicit occur automatically when it is required. 
conversions declared as explicit require a cast to be called. All conversions must be declared as static. We'll discuss the static keyword in an upcoming tutorial. Let's illustrate this with an example. So we are going to write a simple application that converts a user's input, which will be a measurement expressed in meters. We'll then output the converted value to the console screen. As you know from the last tutorials, all value types in C-sharp are implemented as structs. A struct is like a class in that it is a collection of related types, properties, events, and methods. The main difference is that a struct is a value type and a class is a reference type. You also don't need to instantiate or create an object from a struct using the new keyword, like you do when instantiating a class. So we are going to create a user-defined struct and we'll name it Imperial Measurement. The struct will be used to convert the entered metric measurement in meters to the equivalent Imperial Measurement in feet. So I'll create a public field and name this feet. This public field will be used to retrieve the converted value from the object created from this struct. We need to make provision for a fractional value, so we'll define this public field as float. We'll then create a constructor, and this will accept one parameter, which will also be defined as the float data type. The code in the constructor will assign the parameter passed into the constructor to the public field named feet. Now we need to create a static method that will be used to perform the explicit conversion operation from the entered value in meters to a converted value expressed in feet. So this method must be static, and because we first want to demonstrate an explicit user-defined conversion, we must use the explicit keyword. We must include the keyword operator. Then we must give this method the same name as the class in which it resides. The parameter passed into this method will be a whole number value, which will be the value expressed in meters. The code in this method contains a simple formula using the float literal value 3.28. Notice there is an f suffix at the end of this literal value. This is because if this is not included, the C-sharp compiler will infer that this type is of the double type. This will cause a compile time error because we are assigning the result of a mathematical operation to a variable defined as a float. The result of the mathematical operation is assigned to a float defined variable named conversion result. We then instantiate a new object derived from the same struct where the method resides, i.e. the imperial measurement struct and we use the imperial measurement structs constructor to pass in the newly converted value. Let's write the code that will consume this struct and perform the function of this application, which is to take the user's input, which is expressed in meters and convert it. The result is then written to the console screen. We first prompt the user to enter a whole number value in meters. We then use the console class's read line method to retrieve this value from the user. The returned string from the readLine method is converted to an integer using the convert helper classes to int32 method. We then perform our explicit conversion on the user's entered value. By defining a variable, we'll call this im imperial measurement and assign the explicit conversion result to this variable. We then output the value that was entered by the user in the metric measurement of meters as a newly converted imperial measurement. So let's run this code. We'll enter the value in meters. Let me demonstrate how we can enable the imperial measurement struct to implicitly convert the integer value input. Let's see what happens if we remove the explicit conversion code that explicitly converts the integer defined variable to the imperial struct. Okay, as you can see, this results in a compile time error. So to remove this error, we must change the imperial measurement conversion operation method by including the implicit keyword instead of the explicit keyword. Let's test this. And as you can see, the same result is outputted to the screen. We have successfully enabled the implicit conversion from an int defined variable containing the number of meters entered by the user to our user defined type, imperial measurement. We have discussed what it means when we say that the C-sharp code is statically typed at compile time. We have discussed and provided an example of how certain numeric values can be implicitly converted to certain other data types. We have discussed how this is not possible in certain cases and that explicit casting must be implemented to achieve the appropriate conversion operation. We also demonstrated an example of this. We demonstrated how a loss of data can occur when certain explicit conversion operations are implemented. 
We demonstrated how to implement a user-defined data conversion both implicitly and explicitly. Please see the description below for details regarding any supplementary information associated with this tutorial. Please see in the description below under the GitHub section of where you can download relevant documentation and code. Please hit the thumbs up icon if you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, and please subscribe. If you are already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.